Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about SoFi Technologies and their SoFi share price and where it could be headed in the future, and I will also talk about two other companies to buy right now that are trading under $20. After we dissect SoFi as well as these two other companies to buy right now, we'll be diving deeper into the latest SoFi Technologies catalysts, which could cause the overall SoFi share price to increase. After that, we'll also be adding on to a previous story regarding how the Supreme Court either can release positive or negative news that could affect the SoFi stock price. So for more news updates on SoFi Technologies, as well as the latest price targets from professionals, remember to go and annihilate that like button right now, comment your thoughts down below about where you think the SoFi share price is headed in the future, and without further ado, let's jump right into today's stories. Clearly, we're going to start off talking about SoFi Technologies, but we're also going to talk about two other companies, mainly mainly Coupang and New Holdings. All three of these companies are multi-billion dollar enterprises whose share prices could absolutely surge. These three companies here are all younger growth stocks that are either about to become profitable or are already profitable to where they are scaling so rapidly that their share price should eventually catch up to where their future earnings and projections will be. This would also mean that these could be fantastic buying opportunities for investors who are willing to hold these companies over the long term. However, always make sure to do your own research and I'm just going to give my personal opinions about each of these companies. So let's start off with one of my favorite which is SoFi Technologies, ticker symbol SOFI. SoFi is a fintech company or a financial technology company that offers their consumers a very easy to use digital app to where it gives their customers access to essentially any financial product or service that they need. Currently, the SoFi share price is trading at $6.75, but many investors and professionals believe the company could surge up to $10 over the next 12 months. SoFi Technologies as a business has three main business segments, which would be their lending segment, their technology platform segment, as well as their financial services segment. In regards to their overall lending technology and financial services segment, their lending segment brings in the majority of their overall revenues. However, investors normally like SoFi due to all three of these offerings, because this allows the company to give their consumers access to checking accounts, savings accounts, various investment products and services, credit cards, debit cards, student loan refinancing, mortgages, auto loans, and many others. Essentially, SoFi is trying to dethrone traditional banking to make things completely digital. And as of right now, it looks like their plan is working considering that they reported a 60% year over year growth rate in the number of financial products that were used in the fourth quarter of 2022 compared to previous quarters. The company is also growing their overall revenues extremely fast to where their sales growth is guided to rise by a minimum of 25% in the year of 2023. I also want to bring to your attention that management expects the company to become gap profitable by the fourth quarter of 2023. So this is going to be a huge catalyst for the overall company, causing their overall share price to surge upwards, hopefully, as long as we get very good earnings reports from now until the end of the year. So that's why this author believes that SoFi Technologies is a great company to buy and hold forever, especially since they're on the verge of profitability. But remember to make sure to do your own research, and I personally personally only have around a 4% allocation to this particular company because the majority of my wealth is in ETFs and index funds and I don't want to overexpose myself or over allocate myself to risky singular growth stocks but it does look like SoFi Technologies has a great growth trajectory ahead of them. Next up we're going to talk about Coupang, ticker symbol CPNG. This company currently trades at $14.29 but professionals believe this company could surge up to $22. Coupang recently recorded a gap net income margin of 2% and a free cash flow margin of 9% as of the most recent quarter. If you're not already familiar with this company, this is a South Korean e-commerce company that basically operates as the Amazon of South Korea. They offer their WOW membership, so it's very similar to Amazon Prime, and their WOW membership growth grew by 20% up to 11 million members. Their WOW membership is priced at around $50 per year, and it gives their members access to free shippings in return, same-day grocery delivery, exclusive discounts, and access to Coupang Play, which is one of their streaming video services. But I think the best part about this company is that the company's older cohorts and customers 
are not only continuously shopping, but they are buying more through this company, to where their spending increased by 4.7 and 3.6 times respectively in 2018 and 2019, which shows that this company is rapidly expanding. The company also brought in 21% sales growth, which is very outstanding if you find a company that is growing at over a 20% CAGR, which all of the companies on this list are, these are rapidly growing companies, but you do probably need to hold on to these companies until after 2024 to start getting a larger payout. With that being said, Coupang is truly operating as the Amazon of South Korea, and they are being very effective in doing so. They also have ongoing developments in fintech, streaming, logistics, and advertising, which is just going to add to their overall revenue growth. Lastly, we're going to talk about New Holdings, which is a Brazilian-based company, and this company is also owned and backed by Warren Buffett, or at least Berkshire Hathaway, to where New Bank is a rising star in the banking industry. Ticker symbol NU, it's currently trading at just $4.95, but many professionals believe the company could surge in price up to $12.50 by the end of the year. I also, as an honorable mention, would also include ticker symbol MELI, and I won't go into too much detail regarding Meli stock or Mercado Libre, but if you feel like doing your own research, I would highly recommend that you look further into this company. Now, back to New Holdings, we knew that their revenue grew by 112% year over year as of the most recent quarter. So, we know from this metric that the company is expanding and gaining new market share, to where now they have 75 million customers. And this bank is still relatively young, but it accounts for 44% of the adult population in Brazil as their own personal customers, to where the vast majority says that New Bank is their primary banking institution. While most younger companies who grow at a sales rate of over 100% tend to be unprofitable, New Bank actually recorded $8 million in net income for quarter three, which again would represent incredible growth for this overall company. New Bank is just starting to expand internationally to where they are also infiltrating and have plans to infiltrate Mexico as well as Colombia, to where currently it only has a 3 and 2% respective market share in the markets over in Mexico and Colombia. But over the long term, it seems that New Bank stock makes it a perfectly legitimate investment for investors to buy a cheap stock under $20 to buy and hold until this company shows its true worth. However, with that being said, always make sure to do research on all of these companies and don't overexpose yourself to these companies. Be wise. If you plan to buy all three of these companies, I would keep all of them together below a 5% allocation of your portfolio. Maybe a 2% in SoFi Technologies, another 2% of your portfolio in New, and then the last 1% could be in Coupang. However, this is completely up to you and always make sure to consult your financial advisor. Now let's dive in deeper into SoFi Technologies regarding why professionals believe this company could absolutely pop. The author says that it's baffling how SoFi Technologies, ticker symbol SOFI, isn't heavily favored by Wall Street right now considering how poised they are for their overall share price to pop. And we also have to consider how cheap SoFi stock is actually trading right now, even though it is debatable because I do think that the share price could fall lower between the range of $5 to $6. I think that would be an adequate range to acquire more shares of this company. But a Mizuho analyst that we have consulted previously issued a buy rating on this company. On top of that, the billionaire George Soros and his Soros Fund Management Fund also saw a lot of opportunity in SoFi Technologies. So if this author is correct in his bullish thesis, it seems that SoFi investors will enjoy strong growth towards the end of 2023 and beyond. But let's discuss why he thinks this. He goes on to say that time and time again, SoFi Technologies has demonstrated its very innovative technology in regards to products and services. So what has caused the overall share price of SoFi to be beaten down lately? Well, honestly, it's due to macroeconomic factors such as elevated inflation, the Federal Reserve increasing interest rates to get inflation under control, as well as fears over a local or global recession. But I want to tell investors that these are transitory and temporary. It seems that SoFi fundamentally 
is very liked by millennials as well as other generations considering that their all-inclusive, easy-to-use app is attracting customers left and right. Not to mention that many analysts like SoFi Technologies for their artificial intelligence. And if you don't know, SoFi Technologies uses artificial intelligence in their underwriting process so they can give customers the lowest rates they could possibly handle while also weighing the risk to reward regarding which members SoFi can give certain rates to for various loan products, which not only benefits the overall consumer, but also SoFi Technologies. So it seems that the market doesn't necessarily appreciate how innovative SoFi Technologies truly is regarding their distinctive advantages compared to more traditional banking institutions. Therefore, the author says that it makes sense to take a position in SoFi stock before their share price absolutely pops up and starts to build momentum. Now, I would say we aren't really out of the woods quite yet. Investors should still be careful and cautious, and they need to do their own research while also not overexposing themselves to any singular risky growth company. I can't tell you how many times I completely facepalm when I read comments about people going all in on one stock, or even a single stock making up more than 20% of their portfolio. That is improper risk management, and that's not how you build wealth over the long term. So please be careful. But now, let's talk about a catalyst that could send the SoFi share price absolutely surging, and that would have to do with the Supreme Court decisions that are coming up. If you're not familiar, President Joe Biden and the Biden administration released or proposed a plan for student loan forgiveness, to where they could forgive up to $10,000 for various student loan borrowers who have borrowed from the government. So these would be governmental student loans. And for recipients of the Pell Grant, they may be able to receive forgiveness up to $20,000. Clearly, millions of people were interested in this, considering that as of late November, 26 million student loan holders had submitted an application to be eligible for this plan. But before I go on, I want to tell you why this is related to SoFi Technologies. SoFi Technologies is really known for their student loan refinancing, and over the last few years, the student loan moratorium where people wouldn't have to pay on their student loans and their federal student loans don't accrue interest on top of this student loan forgiveness plan has hurt investors' outlook on SoFi Technologies, considering that SoFi Technologies brings in the majority of their revenues from their lending segment segment, and of course, their student loan business is a part of that segment. So now let's go back in, because if this student loan forgiveness plan is demolished by the Supreme Court, this would actually cause SoFi's share price to move upwards in a positive trajectory. So now back to the article. The author says that the courts have prevented the United States Department of Education, also known as the DOE, from implementing this plan. So right now we're at a stalemate, but if the plan is not enacted and the litigation from various lawsuits having been settled by June 30th, payments of these federal student loans will resume 60 days after that date. And that's what I'm honing in on because that could act as a very good catalyst for their overall company. Quickly, my personal view of this is that if people took out federal student loans, it is up to them to pay it back. They should not be mooching off taxpayers or expecting anyone else, such as the government, to pay off their loans. I personally have student loans, however, I am more than willing to pay back on my own debt because I signed a contract willing to take on student loan debt to go to business school. Now that I have my degrees, I am more than willing to pay back on that promise that I made to the federal government and various banks. So I don't think it's fair for some people who have either recently paid off their student loans or people who have been fiscally responsible who have been paying off their loans for these other slackers to get an entire payoff from the United States government. On top of that, I wouldn't want this adding to the overall debt of the United States, considering that the Biden administration has estimated that the cost for the United States would be $400 billion over the next 30 years. This money could be put to much better use. Now, as far as the CEO of SoFi, he says that he supports the resuming of the student loan payments, but he also doesn't mind if the government actually decides to cut some slack to people who have taken out federal student loans. And I think from a public relations standpoint and a marketing standpoint, this is very good on his part. But either way, I think it's going to be a win-win for SoFi Technologies, and I like how the author ends the 
this article by saying that at the end of the day, SoFi shareholders should not base their investment decision whether or not to invest into SoFi technologies off of a short-term catalyst, such as whether or not the Supreme Court is going to provide positive or negative news. An investment in SoFi technologies should be based off of the fundamentals of the company's long-term growth trajectory, not short-term or short-sighted catalysts that could happen in the next year. This is why investors always need to make sure to look into the companies that they are investing into and to not over allocate themselves into any singular risky growth company. I'll be sure to keep you up to date on the various news updates for this company, but I honestly don't anticipate this company to pay off until the end of 2023, just like many other professionals are echoing my same sentiment. So I would love to hear your thoughts down below about the student loan forgiveness plan, whether or not you're for or against it, where you think the SoFi share price is headed in the future, what you think of Coupang or new holdings. Remember to go and annihilate that like button for more videos just like this one. Subscribe if you are new, and I will see you in the next YT video.